Hello and welcome back to episode three of the Students on Campus podcast, hosted by Bella McClintock and Justin Fry. On to our first segment of What's Happening, which will be weekly announcements of events and past week highlights. This past week of May 8th, there were transfer support group Zoom meetings on Mondays and Fridays at 2 to 3 p.m. There were transfer admission planner workshops in person on Tuesday in the Physical Sciences Village. And there were more Laser Floyd shows in the Fujitsu Planetarium from 8 to 9 p.m. on Saturday the 13th. This upcoming week of May 15th, summer registration will be open. Go check your portal to make sure you are registering for classes on time. Tuesday, there is a Run, Hide, and Defend course with information on campus safety at 11.30 a.m. in conference rooms A and B. Tuesday at 1.30 p.m., there is an Ethics in the Age of Artificial Intelligence seminar that is high flex, so on Zoom and in the MLC room 255 with guest speaker Timit Gebru. On Tuesday at 2 p.m. in the Pride Center right behind the library, Come together and explore and discuss your identities in a safe, welcoming, and confidential environment. This group is for those who may be questioning their sexual or gender identity and would like support, and for those who may feel clear in their identity and would like to support others. This Wednesday, the Spring Career Fair will be at 1 p.m. in the Sunken Garden. Chancellor interviews were conducted the week of May 1st. Four open forum interviews took place where the candidates responded to questions posed by members of the community and will be evaluated by the members of the community. The decision will be made by the Board of Trustees at a later date. We will let you know. All right, our guest this week is Amy Huang. Hello. Introduce yourself to the audience, Amy. Hi, my name is Amy Huang, and I'm currently the president of De Anza Student Government. Um, outside of De Anza Student Government, I'm, well, first of all, I'm a student at De Anza College, but I also do a lot of other things. Um, I roller skate, um, I volunteer for a roller skating group, um, and yeah, that's, what, and I also take photos. I used to take photos for Lobos. But, all, yeah. all four majors. All, all four majors, Yeah, I yes. hear that you're a tri-major. What are, what are your majors here at De Anza? Oh my god, I need to pull up a chart, man. <laughs> okay, so before I landed at Dianza, I graduated from Fashion Institute in Design and Merchandising with a degree in Fashion Design, AA Fashion Design. Um, and then at Dianza, I started with my Business Administration degree, and the rest just piled on. So I currently have an AST in uh, Business Administration, AAT in Economics, AA in Management, and another AA in Liberal Arts for... Um, Oh my god, it's the science, technology, engineering one, yeah. That's exciting. Do you know where you're going to transfer to next quarter? I think I'm transferring to San Jose State. That's super exciting. So you'll still be in the area, which we'll love. Yeah, I'll come back and visit. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Amy, what made you want to be a part of the De Anza student government? I think something that happened to all of us during the pandemic is once we went online, we're all looking for that connection um, to people that usually usually would get like on campus. So for me, um, I came out of a job and I wanted to pursue something else in my career. So I ended up coming back to De Anza College to study more. And so I got kind of bored of being online all the time, and I really wanted to get involved with the local student, um, any student organization, really. And the first organization that I was introduced to was De Anza Student Government, because I hit up my friends from a while ago. They all went to De Anza, and I said, hey, if I want to get involved with students, where should I go? And they were all like, DASG, go to DASG. And so that's how I landed as an intern in DASG. So you said you started as an intern. What made you want to run to be president? When I started, I did a lot of marketing work. And so when you work in marketing, a lot of information comes your way. So I get to learn so many different aspects of DASG and things got really just cooler and cooler. And I was like, wow, there's so many things going on all at once. And when I saw that elections is coming up, um, a lot of my peers were encouraging me to run for a position. I think I kind of just looked around to see what where everyone else is running. And I said, you know what? I'm going to run president because... 
I think this leap of faith is going to be really good for my personal development. And I also just love, which is the reason why I, I am a management major. I just love management. I love working with students and I love delegating projects and all that kinds of stuff. So I felt like it was kind of the perfect place for me to be in. Speaking of projects, what were some of the main things you worked on during your time as president? The biggest project that happened over this year um, that I had led was the reorganization of De Anza student government. So when I came on, and a lot of my other senators as well, we felt that there weren't really specified job duties. We didn't really know what we were here to do. And um, we felt like the onboarding, it was adequate, but we could use a little more. So something that I've always been very passionate about is leaving a path better for the students who come in the future. Something that always struck me as odd is that student senators spend so much time um, working in student government, but we were just never compensated, with the exception of the student trustee, who is a district position. Position and they get paid $500 a month. If you're spending so much time and you are spending so much of energy working on something, it's really hard to commit yourself to do other things such as working a job. And so effectively, this structure kind of leaves it so that a lot of underserved students that we really need their voices, they're not able to become student senators because the pure amount of time that it takes and the lack of compensation. So when I stepped up as president, I really wanted to change this norm because it shouldn't be the norm to work for free. That's always something we were told like during fashion school as well. We shrinked positions together. We developed specified job duties and then with the reorganization, I think we shrinked um, 11 branches into six. We shrinked 30 senators down to 26 senators with very specified job duties. And we also built a Canvas module for training for new senators just so that they're able to get a crash course on what DASG is. And because of all of that groundwork, we were able to secure a $35,000 a year allocation where all the student leaders on DASG are not able to get paid for what they do. So that was one of the biggest projects and that was also one of the coolest things because I really get to apply what I learn in my management classes into real life, you know, into making this organization into what it is today. And I'm really proud of that. I think it's really important that you were able to fund these students on the Senate. I know myself as a working student, it's hard to be involved and also make time for making money because <laughs> it's expensive to be a college student. How do you think compensating students with a paid position will change the demographic of the De Anza student government now and in the future. When this cohort of DASG senators first got elected, one of the main things that we keep hearing is that this entire cohort of students, we are 95% Asian, which when we first came on, there was, I think pretty much everyone was East Asian identifying with the exception of a couple senators, which they're still Asian, just not East Asian. For student body, we're really supposed to represent the voices of the entire student body. And it's not fair that students who cannot afford to take the time off or students who just can't take unpaid work. Tianza student government requires a huge amount of work. I know a lot of our senators work probably close to 15 hours a week, which is already considered a part-time job um, in many other places where you would work. And for me personally, I feel that I spend some anywhere between 20 to 30 hours a week just on De Anza student government stuff. It's just because I do really do love my job, but also it's not fair for us to expect students to work unpaid. And so when you're working all of these hours, that's why representation matters because all of these students right now, they're able to work unpaid, but when we're really talking about elevating the voices of student body, we need to have people that represent them in all categories. So our student senators should match the demographics of our student body. And when you have students who cannot work unpaid, this ends up having a ultra privileged Senate that doesn't really see the struggles of working class students or students who need to take for example, two hours buses just to get to school. And especially a lot of the decisions um, on district and on college level with students lies within the hands of student body. So it's important that we compensate our senators to attract people that can work compensated and can voice their respective groups voices at the college level. And that's why it's really important to compensate students for their work. That's really great. I know Deans as a whole really appreciates the impact you've made, especially with the DASG going forward. What would you say to an Amy of two years ago? Any advice you would give her? I think I would say things are scary, things are changing, 
but everything is going to be okay in the long run and you're going to be happy just work towards what you really want to do and you know follow your passion because two years ago i was working as a design assistant and i was losing passion in my work um, under bad management and so i was kind of making the decision of going back to school or not and so that was a really scary time but i i feel that in the end everything worked out and i'm really happy where i'm at now i'm so glad you're happy where you are now Do you have any advice for students who want to get involved in student government? Yeah, a lot of students get really scared of student government because they're like, there's all these official language, um, you know, they all sound kind of scary. But I would just say just go for it, you know, crash one of their meetings, talk to as many people as you can. Don't be shy about bothering people because that's how I got my first in within the student government. And everyone is really, really nice in student government, despite all of the official titles and such. And, you know, the more that you show up, the more people will recognize you. And, you know, you also make a lot of friends while you're at it as well. When I came to De Anza, I didn't really have any friends. I didn't really know anyone at De Anza because I'm slightly older. I'd already had a degree beforehand. But now I'm at a point where I'm like, oh, my God, I don't want to leave De Anza because I have so many friends here. I so, totally yeah. relate to that. I know my first meeting, I was so scared I had to do a presentation for another organization I'm a part a part of and now going to the senate meetings it's so exciting because like you said the more you show up the more people know you and it's really fun to go and just see your friends working there and I, I think I think I agree with what you said that it does sound really official and it is a little scary but everyone there is super cool and you have to remember like we're all students yeah, Which do you I find think. like a home there nowadays? Like when you pop into Senate meetings, like, hey, I know you, I know you. Yeah, plus the DASG lounge is super cool. I, you can always find someone chilling in there. I, I always like to go in there and see what's going on. I know, I just like seeing, walking in and having people crash on a beanbag and be like, oh, I've seen you before. <laughs> yeah. So Amy, you have a history here with us at Lavos. You just got a award that for a photo that was submitted in the California News Publishers Association for a feature photo. Hey, you got second place. Want to make any comments about that? Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed my time working at Laveau's and I really wish I didn't leave. Um, It's just because it's kind of impossible balancing student government with Laveau's. Um, My first passion was photography. That's something that really got me through the pandemic. And that's what enabled me to have a steady income um, working as a graduation and wedding photographer. And so I just love using photo as a language to communicate a feeling, a place, something just to connect all of us together. And so um, I didn't really think that I would win any awards coming to Lavos. I was just excited to document everything around campus. So for this award specifically, which I just found out today. (laughs) That's so exciting. I literally walked in and people were saying congratulations and I was so confused. I was like, what do you mean? (laughs) So for this one specifically, it's about the California History Center. And I remember it was finals week. It was super rainy that day. But um, I saw this assignment and I couldn't pass it up because I knew that we have this little White House looking building in De Anza. It's really pretty. I've always wanted to go in there. And when I went in there, it's a library with um, a lot of materials about California local um, landscapes, about California history. And I just love everything about it. So I took pictures of the buildings itself, the interior, and the librarians working there. They were really, really nice. But yeah, I was just sharing the beautiful things on campus and the places that are super nice because personally, I feel a lot of home on this campus and I really want other students to feel the same. I definitely agree. If you ever get the chance, you should visit the, that center on campus. I went inside for a book talk one time, and it's just beautiful in there. It looks like something out of a, like a movie or, you know, a historical Regency period, you know. <laughs> I know, I was thinking like Harry Potter's like <laughs> basement or something. Yeah, and I love that it's just on campus too. It's kind of a hidden gem. So I think if you get, get the opportunity, I think you should definitely go visit. Amy, anything else you would like to add for our listeners here? Community college is something that goes by so fast. And, you know, when we talk about having two years here, a lot of students come in here the first quarter like, oh, I've just spent two years here. But uh, it goes by super fast. So I would say get involved, Um, you know, whether it's student government or clubs or go to Lavos. um, They're really great. Um, Or any other on-campus organizations. Everyone is here to help. And De Anza people are some of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. So I would just say the two years goes by really fast. So if you see any any opportunities that you really want to do or anything that's really cool, just jump straight in, ask all the questions and you'll make really good friends and have really cool experiences along the way before you transfer out. 
Thank you so much for joining us today, Amy. And for those of you who are just listening in, can you just introduce yourself again? My name is Amy, and I am the De Anza Student Government President. Um, and I'm also a student here at De Anza College for one more quarter. But yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you. To conclude this episode, as every week, we remind you guys that there are resources for students on campus. This includes VTA Smart Pass and Clipper Card for all students, HEFOS through VITA, which gives resources to undocumented students, the Pride Center, like I mentioned before, is on campus, with LGBTQ plus resources in its location behind the library. The Health Center has psychological counselors and therapy for those of you who need it. There are EPS, MPS, and LEAD learning programs, that is the English programs for success and math programs for success. And as always, come join Lavos. We would love to have you. This episode was written by Isabella McClintock, recorded by Isabella McClintock and Justin Fry, and edited and produced by Justin Fry.